Hey everyone, welcome back. It's good to be with you today. We're going to talk about being salty. If you're in the kitchen, you can grab a salt shaker, and just hold it up in front of you. But we're going to we're going to talk about being salty, how salt loses its flavor, what that means for us, what that means for our walk for the Lord. Are you somebody who likes salt? You don't like salt? Somewhere in the middle? We're going to talk about that. But before we dive in, I just want to again welcome everyone. My name is Ruth Hendrickson. I run RHM International. You know, my heartbeat is really to see the body of Christ set free, walking in our identity, walking in the plans and the purposes that God has for us, living into our God dreams, fulfilling our destiny while we're here on the face of this earth, because you are called, I am called to impact the world for the kingdom of heaven. So if you want to visit the website, I want to invite you to go there. It's ruthhendrickson.org. We have lots of resources, lots of training, teaching to help you really grow, to help you become the man or woman that God's called you to be. You know, what makes your heart sing? Aren't you ready to, to function that way through life? So again, that website is ruthhendrickson.org. While you're there, a couple of things. One is you can sign up for the email list. We only send out one to two a week. We will not bombard you. So just they just contain some helpful hints. So that's the first thing. And the second thing I want to say to you is if you feel like you're stuck in a certain area of your life, if you need some healing, you need some deliverance ministry, it is also the place where you can connect with my emotional healing and deliverance ministry. It's called Masha. And you can find information on there, both about how to be trained yourself if you want to become a minister, but also where you can receive ministry from my international team. So all that information's on there, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. So again, the website is ruthhendrickson.org. All right, without further ado, let's talk about salt. You know, do you salt your food for years? I really didn't. You know, I, I had heard all these stories, you know, that salt's bad for you. And, you know, it's interesting because too much of so many things is bad for you, but we do need some. But there's been a huge, huge debate about salt, but that's not what we're here for, are we? We're not here for that debate about salt in the natural. But I do want to state one thing that I found very, very interesting as I was preparing for this, and that is according to the Harvard Medical School, our bodies cannot continue to exist without some salt. Let me just say that again. According to the Harvard Medical School, our bodies, this, this thing, cannot continue to exist without some salt. I just found that really interesting. When we go to the word and Jesus is talking about salt, you know, in Mark 9, 49 to 50, it reads, for everyone will be tested with fire. Salt is good for seasoning. But if it loses its flavor, how do you make it salty again? You must have the qualities of salt among yourselves and live in peace with each other. That's out of the New Living uh, Translation. Now, the Passion Translation talks about our lives being like salt, the season and to preserve. So our lives are to be like salt, the season and preserve. In the footnotes, they actually say to constantly have or hold salt in yourselves. That is, our lives are to become salty for God. The Aramaic speakers refer to salt as a symbol of faithfulness and friendship, and the Jews observed a salt covenant. Jesus instructs his followers to be faithful friends to one another and to live in peace. Okay, so let's talk about salt for a moment. I'm going to use table salt just to just to kind of simplify things here. You know, with table salt, from what I understand, the chemical bond is very, very tight. And so in order to lose its saltiness, that salt shaker that you have, that table salt, you know, it's it's really hard for it to lose its saltiness because it's a chemical composition. So that has to be changed in order for it to lose its saltiness. But how can that be changed? Well, one easy way is diluting in water. You know, it, it actually loses the force of its of its saltiness. So let's take that to a spiritual principle, because, you know, yes, water can taste salty. We can gargle with salt water and and stuff like that. But look at how much salt you have to put in. For that water to have that saltiness okay you're 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 still you're disrupting the chemical that the individual grain doesn't have quite as much salty taste okay you're changing the composition so let's take that over to the spiritual and the, the lesson that we want to learn so what's a way what's one way that we can lose our saltiness we can dilute the gospel when we dilute the word of god we lose our saltiness when we dilute the things of the kingdom, we lose our saltiness. When we dilute the mandates of God, 
we use our saltiness. When we twist scripture to try to fit it into a situation or to try to justify a certain type of behavior, we are losing our saltiness. When we refuse to speak up on the things of God, we are losing our saltiness. Why? Because we're diluting the gospel. Okay, we're diluting the gospel. The other way that salt can use its lose its saltiness is actually to mix it with impurities or to allow impurities into the salt. Now think about that. If we're diluting the gospel, what are we doing? We're allowing impurities into the word of God. We're allowing impurities into our belief system. We're allowing impurities to distort the taste, the flavor that we're supposed to have. So some of the things here, um, as we look at the whole concept of salt and we're asking ourselves, okay, how salty am I? How much of an impact am I being salt and light to the world around me? Well, one is, are you remembering God's faithfulness? Just as salt was used in a sacrifice in the Old Testament, you know, when, when they use the salt, it was to recall God's covenant with his people. Are you remembering the covenant that God has with you? Are you, are you remembering his faithfulness, his mercy, his love, his kindness, his justice? Are you remembering Jesus's death and his resurrection just for you? Are you remembering that your sins are forgiven? So are you remembering God's faithfulness? Another thing to, to just take a look at is how salty are you? I mean, we should be so salty that we're making a difference in the world that we live in. Just the salt changes flavor, right? You know, Matthew 5, 13, he specifically states that we are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. We're meant to flavor the world with the things of heaven. Okay, that's what we're meant to do. We're meant to flavor the world with the things of heaven. And I just find that very interesting that, that so often I think the world is flavoring us with the things of the world, with the things of the earth, more than we're flavoring the world with the things of heaven. And what a way to think about it, you know, next time, every time you get out a salt shaker or grinder, or you look at some salt, or maybe even get a piece of rock salt and put it out where you can see it and say, am I the salt flavoring the world around me? Or are the impurities of the world coming into my salt so that I'm losing, so that I'm losing my flavor. You see, when, we, when we're when we salt to the world around us, then we should counteract the moral decay in society. You know, it interests me that one of the ways that you preserve something, of course, is to use salt. And that's not as common here in the area I live in. Um, you know, we have freezers and we have all sorts of other ways to preserve things, but, there was a time when that was the major way to preserve something. One of the interesting components of this process of using salt to, to, uh, to preserve is that when you preserve a food using salt, it actually prevents the bacteria and the foodborne pathogens from growing. You know, those things that cause things like salmonella and food poisoning and other various serious problems. The salt, as it goes to preserve, it actually prevents the things that are harmful from growing. If we are the salt to the world around us, then we prevent the things that are harmful from growing. Something to think about, isn't it? How does it, how does salt do that in the natural? It actually removes the water molecules that the bacteria need to grow and live. And I find that so interesting because I was sitting there thinking about it and I'm going, God, you talk so much about water. You talk so much about living water and, and needing that water and that wellspring of life and, you know, for that to spring up from within us. But I got to looking at it and I'm like, wow, okay, in the, na in the natural, if salt removes the water molecules that the bacteria need to grow and live then if we're salt to the world around us, we're removing the things from the world that the demonic, that the yuck, that our sin, that the moral decay needs to grow. We're actually removing it because we're to be like salt. We're to pres we're, when you think about this whole concept of preserving, you know, I think so often it's easy to say, well, you know, Adam and Eve handed over the keys of the kingdom to the demonic, to Satan. And, you know, he's got rule and reign here. 
And we forget that we're here with a purpose and we're here with a kingdom mindset and we're here to be salt. We're here to bring a different quality. We're here to bring a flavor. And, you know, things taste very differently when they're flavored with salt. And so we're to flavor the world around us so that it tastes differently and so that the demonic can't get a foothold, so that we take things back, so the moral decay can't continue to grow. That bacteria and the pathogens that cause illness can't continue to grow in the world around us. Just something to ponder for today. I just found it so interesting as I was looking up the different attributes of salt and thinking, wow, you know, there's so much more here in our walk and in our time on this earth as we represent heaven, as we pull heaven down to earth, then we even realize. So how's your saltiness today? You know, how, how are you doing at, at impacting the world around you? How are you doing at flavoring it? And how are you doing at keeping the, the bacteria, the pathogens, the demonic at bay? How are you doing at keeping the moral decay at bay? Because you're on assignment for such a time as this. You are to be salt to the world. You are to bring flavor. So guard that. You know, really spend time with the Lord. Step back into that. Look at some salt and ask him to speak to you. So as I wrap this up, let's just pray. Let's just um, pray that we can be salty and have the impact around us that we're to have for the kingdom of heaven that goes so far beyond what we see that we really step into that mandate and that we flavor the world around us. So Heavenly Father, we just come and, and God, where we've held back, it's like we've just stayed in the salt shaker. We've just stayed in there where it's safe, secure. We've stayed with the other salt grains of salt and, and we've just felt good in there. And, and um, you know, we've just stayed contained in our bubble. God, forgive us for that. Father, you call us to be salt to the world around us, which means we have to be poured out. Just like food cannot be preserved or flavored, either one, unless the salt is released. Father, we want to release the salt to the world around us so that we flavor it. And so that the things that are not of you cannot grow. They can't find a foothold. They cannot grow because we're right there. We're, we're putting salt on from the very kingdom of heaven because that's who you've created us to be. So Father, today we want to step into that position. So Father, open our eyes to see that, open our ears, to hear what you're saying, to hear your directives. Father, give us the courage to be, to be putting that salt out there and to flavor the things around us, Lord. Lord, as we sit with you, show us creative ideas, ways to release this so to a greater measure so that that taste just marinates in the world around us so that it's flavored so wonderfully with the things of heaven. Father, we just look to you, Father, Help us to be salty, God. We, we step back and we remember who you are. We step into the goodness, all that you've done for us, the plans and purposes, your promises, God, who you are. We step back into the arena of covenant with you. So, Father, we want to be salty. We want to impact the world around us. Lord, let us be salt. In Jesus' name, amen. So there you go. Go up, grab a little bit of salt, eat some, remind yourself who we are to be, what you are created for. You are created to have impact. You are created to bring flavor. What's the flavor that you're bringing? What's the flavor that you're bringing to the world? To the world? Is it the flavor of the kingdom of heaven or is it full of impurities? It's time to bring the fullness of the kingdom of heaven. That's what you were created for. And you're going to find so much joy as you begin to do that. Because again, you're stepping into your identity. You're stepping into who God created you to be. So again, thank you for joining me today. Whatever platform you're on joining me, I want to invite you to share it. If you could subscribe, rate, review, tell others, I would appreciate it. When you get a chance, go to the website, ruthhendrickson.org. Look at some of those resources and just be so blessed. Have an amazing day and be salty for Jesus today.